Your presence graces the air, and soon everyone will see. You. Congratulations on this film. Um, it's wonderful and truly uncomfortable to watch, which I think is why oh, it's good. so wonderful. It hits it so hard. Um, Glad to hear. And it was it was kind of a few years in the making. So if you just sort of why did you want this um, particular story to, to hit the big screen, especially for your first project, a uh, first, first feature length project? Um, it's hard to pinpoint. I don't know. I think I think it's the, the story and characters probably just still sort of weird amalgamation of stuff that I'm interested in and sort of had rattling around in my head. So I guess I, I think from the beginning, the initial sort of hook that I thought sounded interesting was having a film which sort of is pretty much exclusively takes place in a young woman's head um, while she's kind of having some kind of on a strange ongoing relationship with God. I'm interested in like the sort of how dramatic the divide between the weird sort of intense private universes we've got going on in our head, like how different that can be from the world around us. And I think cinema kind of, cinema and literature, I guess, give you a fairly unique sort of window into people's, other another person's brain and world in a way that we never get to otherwise. When you pray, do you get a response? Oh. It's like he's physically in me. There is, it is, it is creepy, and there's a lot of kind of also physical kind of body horror in it as well. What was it actually like to put together and to and to direct? Because that must be quite hard to kind of instruct in a lot of ways. Yeah, it, it was really fun to be honest. I think a lot of people are kind of like, oh, that must have been a really bleak, intense experience. And it's like, no, it was great. It was all very kind of like light and jolly to be honest. I think I got all the angsting and freaking out out of the way just writing it, and all of that feels so uncertain. Like it's sort of you know, I don't know, I sort of started to get a bit funny. Um, so I think by the time we actually got greenlit, I was just so sort of relieved and excited to finally be actually getting to make a movie. That, um, and you know, I mean, it sounds dead boring, but you know, it was just a really great group of people and um, had a really nice fun time. All the, all the physical stuff's the most fun. Like, all, you know, it's the first time I've sort of had, uh, you know, budget and resources to kind of play around a bit with stunts and effects and things like this. So that was, um, yeah, that was great, I think. And luckily, more of it's kind of like really chilled and fun to work with. And I think she, well, I hope she enjoyed that stuff anyway. Um, but yeah, some of the scenes are definitely a, a bit sort of weird to direct, or, but as in probably to an outsider, if you came in, I probably ended up giving her some really weird notes. But when you're in it, obviously it's all incredibly normal. So it's like, of course she's putting pins in her shoes at this scene. Of course she's a, why wouldn't you? I was going to ask about Morford actually, because she is just incredible as Maud in this. Yeah, exactly. Why was she kind of your top choice? Like, how did you go about getting her involved? She's just a really, really great actress and she's incredibly versatile, which is good because the character sort of, you know, is very um, contradictory and, you know, I, I, I want it to be the kind of thing where the audience, you're not quite sure if you can trust her or not. At some points she's, you know, you're scared for her. And then in other scenes, she's sort of the source of fear. So I like, I don't know, she seemed to be able to encompass all those things and be a bit of a chameleon and a shapeshifter. Um, and she's really funny. That was kind of, that was sort of like the, sealed the deal for me basically like it's it's obviously not like a comedy a comedy but it's I, I think you know some people think it's surprised that there is quite a lot of dark humor in the film and for me that's really important otherwise it's just I don't know it doesn't it doesn't feel real um and she's got great timing so she brought all of that out I'm a private carer you're still nursing well they know what happened oh the good girls go to hell. And Maud's obviously got quite a very intense relationship with um, Jennifer L's character as well. And what mm. were they kind of like to put together? I mean, that chemistry is amazing. What was Jennifer like to work with? She was only able to fly to England like a few days before we started shooting. And most of that was taken up with sort of like costume fittings and sorting out like the bald heads, uh, makeup, because her characters had chemo. Um, so I think her, me and Maud went out for dinner once and we did a couple of sort of a few hours sort of camera tests with them sort of half in their costumes and the set sort of half finished. And I was just getting them to sort of stroke each other's faces um, a lot. Uh, but yeah, fortunately they just sort of click really well. And I think for me, like their performance is really, both of their sort of like performance style, I guess, uh, really complement each other. They're both incredibly sort of effortless, natural performers, which is good with a film like this, which is pretty, otherwise very sort of like heightened, quite sort of ridiculous in places. Um, you know, like Maud particularly has got some pretty uh, ridiculous lines, which she just manages to make sound completely, completely natural and throw away. I have a responsibility. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> Life and death. Well, this film has already received so much praise, which is amazing. So, so it kind of went all around the film festivals last year. Um, it, you won a prize at the um, London Film Festival anniversary last year as well, um, and had people like Danny Boyle praising your film. I mean, what was that like to kind of have it out and for people to actually respond so well? 
really surreal and really lovely. I still don't quite know how to sort of handle the bit, to be honest. It's obviously incredible, an amazing feeling for something that sort of feels incredibly, it's not like an autobiographical film or anything, but it still feels incredibly personal and sort of, you know, you've put everything into it and worked on it for such a long time. So having, being able to watch it in a particularly, the best thing to be honest is being able to actually sit in the back of the screening and kind of listen to people kind of laugh or wince or shout or whatever in the right places. That's incredibly gratifying. Um, so I think maybe it's a bit addictive because then I just really want to make another one. Cause even got her soul. I just want to see you loosen up. I've got more important things on my mind. Uh, this film's actually going to be in cinemas as well. And after the last sort of six months, um, I mean, it, it's amazing to sort of see films go back on the big screen. I mean, are you excited mm. to kind of finally be able to portray this for audience, for mainstream audiences in big cinemas again? That must be so exciting. Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm really curious to see how it um, how it all unfolds and kind of who, whether people kind of want to go back on it. I hope they do, but I mean, who knows? I'm really. I'm to be honest. I'm. I'm really grateful that like if we had to, if you had to release a film around now, the fact that we sort of got to have a taste of the sort of cinema experience before all of this happened during festivals with packed audiences is great. Although I'm kind of thinking maybe socially distanced seating, watching Saint Maud might be quite sort of fitting and kind of like give us an extra sense of sort of isolation and suspicion of the people around you, which kind of taps into her mindset a little bit more. So maybe it'll, maybe it'll add something.